Hey, what's up guys? So this is gonna be kind of a random video, but it's something I stumbled across recently that uh, I think you're gonna find interesting. So I was watching one of these home improvement shows the other day and uh, they were remodeling an old house and uh, when they were installing a new doorbell, I heard the guy say, I was kind of barely paying attention to this, but I heard the guy say, don't forget to put the diode in across the push button. And I, I heard this and I was like, why would you need to put a diode across the push button? What purpose could that possibly serve? So I started thinking about it and uh, I found that the diode plays a very important role in new doorbell systems. So I was just, this was driving me crazy. I actually came up with a little circuit to, to demo what this diode does and it's kind of cool actually. So uh, let, me, let me show you what this diode does. Okay, so before I show you the circuit and how I, I got it working here, I just want to show you basically how these doorbell circuits work and they're very very simple so the old-fashioned mechanical doorbell when you press the button ding dong it's a very simple setup we've got you know your AC mains over here you've got a transformer somewhere in the system bringing that voltage down from AC mains to like 16 volts AC uh, and then you have your doorbell up here there's usually like three terminals on there uh, one for the neutral line of the transformer so one side of the transformer and then the other side uh, comes from the front of the doorbell or the, uh, the front door where the button is and then also in the backyard where the button might be so you have two inputs to the doorbell but don't worry about that we're just talking about the circuit here so it's it's a very simple loop here so you can see that forget about the diode but you've got the button here so when you press the button it completes the circuit and the doorbell actuates so you have some solenoid in there that with a plunger that bangs against the the bell when you press it so, so that's the old fashioned mechanical system. So when you update to the new electronic ones that might play like a melody when you press the button, here's the thing, this is what the diode is for. So if you were using that same wiring from an older, uh, older doorbell installation, then when you press the button and let go, you lose power to the doorbell. And so you can't play like a melody or like some kind of song or whatever, you know, that doorbell has. So the purpose of this diode here is to provide continuous power up to the doorbell. You see, so it's, it's, uh, it provides a half wave rectified, uh, I was kind of drawing it here, uh, it provides a half wave rectified AC signal to the doorbell. And then you can from there filter this out and create a nice DC supply for the microcontroller or whatever processor you've got at your doorbell. Then the trick is though, is how do you detect when the button is pressed? So this is the thing. You need to then, when you press the doorbell, now suddenly you have a full AC sine wave because you've just shorted out the diode. So the trick is now to detect the negative portion of this because normally when the doorbell is, you know, when the button is open, just sitting there, you only have the half wave. So the focus then you need is to detect this negative portion. And I actually have a circuit here working that does just this. So, you know, I actually came up with this, hacked this together while I was watching the show because I was like trying to figure out how I would do it. So here is the circuit. We'll look at some of the waveforms uh, as well. So uh, I have a, uh, a 12 volt uh, AC wall adapter here. So that's what I'm using as my, my 16 volts AC. I've got a little push button over here so you can see that we've got continuous power through this system here. This is simulating what that push button would be. I've got the diode there right across it. I've got an LED over here which is my always on power. And uh, when you press the button, I've got a green LED there so that showing that I can detect that. And of course I could take this further and get you know an Arduino hooked up to this thing to fully demonstrate the whole thing. But this will give you the, the basic idea of what I did here. Okay, so check it out. This is the circuit I came up with. And basically the way this works, it's two parts. We've got a power supply section on the top and then the negative going detector circuit on the bottom here. So the top part is very simple. I've got another, and by the way, this here is the terminal F. Okay, so that's like this terminal here. So it's like we want to use the same exact wiring from another system. In fact, we don't want to change anything up here. It's the same exact pinout, all of that. So that would be here. And I'm showing F is the terminal there. And then anywhere you see the ground sim symbol would be like my neutral line. Okay. So what I did here is added another diode here, a 1N4007. 
And the reason for this is because if you press this button down, now I suddenly have a full wave AC waveform coming into this board. So I need to rectify and there's no harm in double rectifying. It's not double rectifying, but I've got two diodes in series with each other when it's just sitting there. So there's, there's no harm in that. I'll still get the half wave waveform there. In fact, we can take a quick peek at some of this stuff. So first of all, let's look at our main AC. Oops, just had a short there. Okay, so let's get that scope scaled up and you can see we've got the full AC coming in. We've got about 20 volts of uh, a, a 20 volt peak on that waveform. So we've got our main AC coming in and then after the diode after the button I'm gonna look right at that point right here you can see we've got the half wave rectified waveform now if I press the button look at that it comes right back so that's the point of that second diode now let's look at it right after that second diode now I have a big filter in there so it's gonna look pretty flat you can see some ripple in there Make sure that's coming up okay cool so there's some ripple in there but it's not too bad but even when I press it, press the button there, you can see it. So it is uh, it is rectifying it after the fact, you know, after you press the button there. Uh, okay, and I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's go back here. So yeah, we rectify it, and then we got the big 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor in there, and it's got to be rated for the peak voltage of this, at least the peak voltage. So I think I've got either a 25 volt or a 50 volt cap in there and it uh, smooths it out. And then from there, we go right into the LM317. Now I use the LM317 for this, which is a linear regulator, because it's got a nice uh, wide V in, so it's, it can handle the higher voltages. So this is about 20 volt peak, so I wanna make sure that this can handle that, no problem. And I've got some caps on the input of that, 10 mic, 0.1, and I will also have a 10 mic and a 0.1 on the output. This is an adjustable version of the LM317. So I just got like, I got a 1K there going over to the adjust pin and then two 1Ks in series down to ground. And that generates about four volts on the output of this. Again, I'm not too concerned about any of this right now because it's just kind of a, a prototype circuit. So let me see if I can grab that voltage. I'll just kind of, here we go. Okay, look at that. So a nice 3.82 volts. So that could power an Arduino. And you can see very little ripple. Looks super clean. Uh, nice voltage. So, and that's created right off of the half wave rectified signal. And I'm not loading it down a whole lot, but I wouldn't expect, you know, the microcontroller to load it down. I'd, I'd, I'd design this circuit for maybe like 100 milliamps of load tops. Maybe even, maybe even less. Okay, so that's the microcontroller portion. And this remains constant, you know, uh, or I mean on the whole time, uh, regardless if the button is pressed or not pressed. Okay, th you could even sleep, you know, your microcontroller up here when the button is not being pressed too. There's, there's a few options and then wake up when it detects that the button is pressed. So down here we have the negative going detection. So we know that when we press the button, we have a full wave AC waveform here. And we know that we need to catch the negative going portion of that because that's what we that's how we're going to detect when the button is pressed. So since it's negative, we can actually drive current from ground here back out through the pin. So that's why I have this diode here with a 1K and then through an opto coupler here. So you can see my my current path is this way. And this is going to only drive it kind of like that, you know, it's in, and I'm going to get a square wave output out of my opto coupler, which is fine. Who cares? You know, I just need to detect it, that it was pressed. Even if it's kind of going like this, no big deal. I just need to catch it that first edge. And once I catch it, then I can activate the melody and all that kind of stuff and then go back to sleep or whatever I want to do. And I'm using an opto coupler for this. I'm using the 6N137. Okay, and uh, I'm using the single channel version here so you can kind of figure out what the pinouts here are. This is a, I believe, an open drain. At least that's how I have it wired up. And uh, which means that the output basically sinks current when it's activated. Yeah, and that's that's how I have this, this wired up. 
So we can take a quick peek at that. So looking at, uh, let's look at the first, let's look at it right after the diode here. So you see we have the positive going portion. And then as soon as we press the button there, we have the negative going portion. This is right at where point am I at here? Let me catch where I'm at here and get organized. Okay, no, actually what I'm looking at here should be normally flat here, but when we press the button, we see the negative voltage there going through the diode there, conducting on through and then turning on. Let's look at it actually. A better, a better plot would be to look at it right after the opto. So on the other side of the opto. And just one thing to keep in mind with this is you could design this circuit many different ways. In fact, you could, uh, if you wanted to, design this circuit using discrete transistors if you wanted to. And basically what you're trying to do here is shift the domain so that you have a signal out here to your microcontroller with respect to ground, okay? You don't want a negative going signal going to your microcontroller because that'll blow it up. You know, you can't read negative five volts to your microcontroller. You gotta shift that over to a, a zero to five volt type signal. You could bias it up you know, and then read it in, and, and, and you, you could do a lot of different things here. But the easiest way is just to throw down an optocoupler because the optocoupler conducts this way, right, to turn it on. And as soon as it turns it on, now on this side, I could do whatever I want with that signal, and that's exactly what I did here. I have it with respect to my ground here on this end with the 4 volts DC that I created off of the LM317. So you can see the path here now. I have an LED hooked up there through 1K down through the opto coupler and that's it. Of course, you don't have to use an LED in your real in your real circuit, you'd use some kind of 10k pull up there maybe and then read that right into your microcontroller. So that's kind of the setup. But anyway, what I wanted to do is look at the output of that opto coupler and I think I'm on the right pin here. Yeah, so check that out. That's kind of cool. Let me make sure I got that. Okay, so when I press the button now, you see we have a square wave because it's turning on and off. You know, we're not going to get that smooth sine wave, half wave rectified signal. We're going to get a square wave because the optocoupler is, you know, slamming on and off. Okay, which is fine. I and mean, we can easily detect that and do whatever we need to do. But anyway, okay, this was just kind of a cool video. Um, uh, you know, I saw this uh, diode thing. It kind of was like, what? what is the diode? You know, at first I was like, what? Maybe they screwed up. Maybe they were talking about some other component and uh, said diode. You know, maybe somebody just said, oh, but it's a diode or maybe it's something. I don't know, you know. So I had to think about it for a little bit. And it turns out it's actually used by the newer electronic chimes to provide that always-on power. But then I thought it was cool. Well, how do you then detect when the button is pressed? And this is just one way that you could do that. So anyway, that's the video. Thanks for watching.